For the longest time, fibromyalgia didn't get much attention from researchers. It was not even recognized as a real condition and often attributed to stress or being all in your head. But now things are changing. Today, more people are being diagnosed with fibromyalgia than ever, and it's finally being recognized as a real condition. This has sparked a lot of interest in the medical world. Today, we're discussing the latest discoveries that are reshaping our understanding of fibromyalgia, from studies that reveal its potential link to being an autoimmune disorder, to diagnostic tools and promising treatments on the horizon. The landscape of fibromyalgia research is evolving, offering hope and validation to millions of people. So, either you're navigating the challenges of fibromyalgia yourself, supporting a loved one, or simply here to learn, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Daniela, and you're watching Through the Looking Glass, where we foster resilience and inspire lives. Understanding the mechanisms. Is fibromyalgia an autoimmune disorder? Once fibromyalgia was recognized as a real condition, it was believed to be a disorder of the central nervous system, but a study led by King's College London, in collaboration with the University of Liverpool and the Karolinska Institute, has provided evidence that many fibromyalgia symptoms may be due to autoimmune problems. This study was initiated in early 2019 and was designed as a multi-phase cross-disciplinary effort to explore the underlying mechanism of fibromyalgia symptoms. Utilizing a cohort of over 200 participants, the study compared the blood samples of fibromyalgia patients with those of a control group without the condition. The methodology adopted was comprehensive, employing both observational and experimental techniques. The credibility of the research is supported by its publication in several esteemed scientific journals, where it underwent a rigorous peer review. The interdisciplinary team behind the study included experts from immunology, neurology, and rheumatology. The study revealed that antibodies found in the blood of fibromyalgia patients have a direct impact on the central nervous system. These antibodies increase the sensitivity and activity of pain-sensing nerves scattered throughout the body. This mechanism suggests that widespread pain experienced by fibromyalgia patients could be a result of a immune system disorder, rather than an issue originating solely within the brain's pain processing centers. So, they were not entirely wrong in thinking that it was a central nervous system problem, but what they missed is what was causing that problem. But how did they prove this? The autoimmune hypothesis of fibromyalgia was supported by experiments using mice models. By transferring antibodies from fibromyalgia patients to mice, researchers were able to replicate fibromyalgia-like symptoms in these animals. This experiment was pivotal because it demonstrated that the disease could be induced through the immune system, providing a clear link between the presence of specific antibodies and the manifestation of fibromyalgia symptoms. This insight is crucial because it shifts the focus of fibromyalgia research and treatments from the central nervous system to the immune system. Understanding that antibodies can alter the nerve function means that treatments could be developed to target these antibodies directly, potentially reducing or eliminating the pain in fibromyalgia patients. These findings are not only fascinating from a scientific standpoint, but also offer hope for those suffering from fibromyalgia. If the condition can be induced in animal models through the immune system, then it stands to reason that modulating or correcting the immune response could alleviate symptoms in humans. The identification of an autoimmune component in fibromyalgia is a significant step forward in understanding and treating this complex condition. This represents a radical shift from current treatment, which primarily focuses on symptom management rather than addressing the underlying cause. One of the most promising aspects of this discovery is potential for developing medications designed to block or modify the activity of the problematic antibodies, thereby reducing their impact on pain-sensing nerves. This research could also lead to better diagnostic tools for fibromyalgia. 
Currently, diagnosing the condition is challenging with many patients undergoing lengthy processes to rule out other diseases. If specific antibodies or other immune markers can be identified as indicators of fibromyalgia, it could lead to quicker, more accurate diagnosis and ultimately earlier intervention. Which leads me to the next point, an experimental blood test. Fibromyalgia has been traditionally been diagnosed using the American College of Rheumatology criteria, which focuses on symptoms. This approach has limitations such as subjective assessment and the potential for over with other conditions. The need for a more precise diagnostic method is much needed. When researching tests for fibromyalgia, I came across two tests, FMA test and fibrogene test. The FMA test, developed by Epigenetics, was introduced in 2013 as a diagnostic tool for fibromyalgia designed to identify specific immune abnormalities. The underlying hypothesis of this research is that fibromyalgia involves genetic components and that this disorder could be linked to specific genetic markers or mutations. The test measures markers in the immune system, specifically looking at the production of proteins and cytokines by white blood cells. It suggests that fibromyalgia may involve genetic components and be linked to specific genetic markers or mutations and the involvement of the immune system in this pathology. Claims about the test sensitivity and specificity are notable, with sensitivity around 99% and specificity around 95%, according to statements from Dr. Gillis. If you don't have experience with research, I'll explain what that means. When a test has high sensitivity, it means it's very good at correctly identifying if someone has the disease being tested and rarely misses one. So from 100 people who got a positive result, 99 of those actually have the disease, but one would have got a false positive. On the other hand, a test that has high specificity means that it's very good at correctly identifying those who do not have the condition and rarely gives a false alarm. So again, if we take 100 people who got a negative result and we have a specificity of 95%, 95 people would correctly not have the disease but five of those people do have it despite their negative results, thus a false negative. Now, these figures should be considered within the context of ongoing research and peer-reviewed validation. So with a sensitivity of 99%, if you got a positive result for that test, you're pretty sure you actually have the disease. But if you got a negative result, then there's a 5% chance that it's wrong. At the moment, researchers are conducting a comprehensive study involving up to 250,000 participants who have received a positive diagnosis through the FMA test. And the goal is to perform DNA sequencing to identify common genetic traits among fibromyalgia patients and compare these with the DNA of healthy individuals. That is a substantial substantial sample size and holds very promising potential. The test is already available in many countries and while it's FDA compliant, meaning the test adheres to standards and regulations set by the FDA, it is not FDA approved. FDA approval is a specific designation that means the agency has formally reviewed the clinical evidence supporting the safety and the effectiveness of a drug or medical device and has approved it for sale and marketing in the United States. Also, the cost for this test can be significant if not covered by insurance, exceeding $1,000 and so, given the current status of the research and the cost of it, this test should be approached with caution. The other test I came across is called Fibrogene. This is an experimental blood test being developed by Ample Biosolutions aimed at improving the management of fibromyalgia through genetic profiling. I know, fancy, right? This test seeks to revolutionize the treatment of fibromyalgia by identifying genetic markers that could predict 
predict how patients might respond to specific treatments, potentially reducing the trial and error when experimenting with medications. It uses RNA analytics, bioinformatics, and machine learning artificial intelligence to analyze a person's genetic profile or the genomic fingerprint. It characterizes more than 95% of all gene types, providing a detailed understanding of an individual's predisposition to fibromyalgia and other related conditions. The primary goal of the FibroGene test is to identify the most effective medication for an individual facilitating a personalized treatment approach rather than a one-size-fits-all method. The FibroGene test is expected to be commercially available as early as 2025. And that leads me to new drugs for the management of fibromyalgia. In this evolving landscape of fibromyalgia research and treatment, a significant breakthrough comes in the form of TNX-102SL, a new treatment option that shows promise for those suffering from this chronic condition. Tonix Pharmaceuticals, the company behind this drug, has successfully completed its second phase three clinical trial, whatever that means, focusing on improving sleep quality rather than sleep quantity. And that is so interesting because we know that so many people with fibromyalgia suffer from sleep disorders that affect their quality of sleep, especially deep sleep, which is crucial for your body to repair itself. This approach is based on the hypothesis that poor sleep quality is a major problem for people who suffer from fibromyalgia, preventing them from achieving restorative sleep and recovery. TNX102SL is a sublingual tablet that contains cyclobenzaprine, a muscle relaxant that when administered in low dose and sublingual form is aimed at improving sleep quality and therefore reducing pain and fatigue symptoms associated with fibromyalgia. Clinical trials of this drug have shown promising results with patients reporting significant improvement in pain, sleep quality, and overall quality of life. I mean, wouldn't that be wonderful? With plans to file for FDA approval in the second half of 2024, TNX-102SL is on the cusp of potentially becoming a new fibromyalgia treatment. These findings represent not just scientific breakthroughs, but hope for those affected by fibromyalgia. For a really long time, nothing was happening in the fibromyalgia world in terms of new treatments. We have been offered the same old antidepressants, Cymbalta and Lyrica. Then came LDN, and that was a huge thing in the fibromyalgia world. And it isn't it interesting that LDN targets the glial cells, which are nothing less but immune cells of the brain. They might really be onto something with this link to the autoimmune system. The journey towards understanding and managing fibromyalgia has been long and full of challenges, but today we stand on the brink of a new era, an era where fibromyalgia is not only recognized, but can be addressed in a way that is tailored to each individual's needs. The shift towards recognizing fibromyalgia as potentially having an autoimmune immune component, the development of diagnostic tests, and the exploration of new treatment options mark significant advancements in the fibromyalgia arena. Let me know if you've heard of any of these new advancements in fibromyalgia. If you found value in this video, make sure to like and subscribe and share it with someone you think might benefit from this information. Remember, information is power. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.